Hello everyone and welcome back to another LEGO 2022 set review here on my channel. Today we're looking at one from the Disney Pixar Lightyear theme. This is set number 76831, the Zerg Battle. It is a 7 plus set with 261 pieces and retails for $39.99 Canadian. This set was released on April 24th, 2022 and is currently available from all major retailers. All the builds of the set are primarily character based with no real side builds included. The main build is obviously the Zerg figure. A secondary robot figure is included named Eric. Two minifigures are included, Izzy Hawthorne and Buzz Lightyear, both featuring alternative headgear. The final figure of the set is a cat figure named Socks. Now before we go on with the review, I do want to note that I have not seen the movie Lightyear at the time of this recording. so I. I'm going to uh, go based on what I know for the characters that are new for this film. I do have some knowledge of Zerg and Buzz, having seen the to uh, Toy Story movies that involve those characters, despite the fact that this is a very different Buzz Lightyear than those of the Toy Story movies. But anyways, we'll, like with all my reviews, we'll look at each of the builds, then the figures, then end with the box, and my final thoughts. The primary builds for this set is the Zerg figure himself, and in... If you've built the superhero mech suit figures, you do know that you do know that there is a fairly standard formula for the suits this size. They all use the Mixels ball joints for their articulation, with not a lot of really changes from that. This figure has a lot of uses of those ball joints, with them being used for his shoulders, his elbows, his wrists, his hips, and his feet. The knees on this figure do use the hinge pieces though. In terms of his build, the figure is fairly straightforward with not a lot of u uh, not a lot of complicated technique used. He does have some minor studs not on top technique used for his torso though on both the front and the back. This helps create this smooth surface on both the front and the back. There is some sticker sticker details on the back, which is a very different thing for a uh, figure this size especially compared to the Hulkbusters, which are significantly larger. This figure, again, does use a lot of stickers, though, with uh, four being used for his torso on the front, the three on the back, two for his shoulder pads, one for each of his uh, arm pieces, one for each feet, one for each foot, and one for each of his legs. So there is a lot of stickers used for this figure. In terms of his articulation, he does have the fully rotating uh, shoulders, as well as the fully rotating uh, elbows and wrists. And as you can tell from now, his legs also are uh, articulated with a ball joint piece here for his hip. And if you can't tell from when I was moving the figure earlier, there is hardly any friction on the ball joint at this uh, on this uh, portion of the figure. I'm not sure if that's just my figure or if that's on all the uh, Zerg figures this size. It is unfortunate as it does make it very hard to pose the figure with the leg always slipping out of place. The knees, as you can see here, do use the hinge pieces. And there's a new piece used inside, which was introduced in the Batmobile Tumbler from last year. This is a modified 1x2 plate with a uh, horizontal hinge on it. Something that was not done up until 2021. The bottom of his feet do use the ball joints, which give them the fo uh, full posability. Again, they do have a sticker on the front. The fingers for both hands have a lot of posability as well. The thumb is the standard modified one by one round plate with the bar. This does give it some ability to be moved like so. His fingers are the clip pieces, which can be uh, which are attached to a modified one by two plate with a bar. These allow them to move fairly easily. They are also fairly loose, unfortunately. The head is attached to a Technic axle, again giving it some posability. It it cannot bend up and down. It does, It can spin all the way around though, thanks to the axle in, uh, inside. And the art articulation is fairly similar for both arms and both legs, so there's not a lot to go over there. In terms of detailing though, I do like the way they built up the armor on this figure. It does give it a very unique touch to the overall design. I also like the way they added a battery pack to his side. I do see I have it on the wrong side according to the box though. The back of the figure is fairly plain without the, with some only minor sticker details on uh, on the back. You can see some of the uh, red blading through from the uh, front of the figure, unfortunately, as well as some a little bit of detailing on the uh, insides. 
Here you can see a little bit better detailing of the build of the figure, which again is a lot of brick building with some studs on the top used for the front and back. It does give a very nice smooth surface though. There's the top of the figure and there's the bottom. Unfortunately, again, his knees are not very strong, so there's not a lot of ability to do much with them, sadly. There's some more, some more stickers. There's the back. And yeah, that's it for the Zerg figure. Next, we'll look at the other robot. The second build of the set is the robot named Eric. And to be clear, I have not seen the movie Lightyear, so I'm not sure what the significance of this character or Izzy Hawthorne is in the movie, besides what I've seen in the trailers, of course. Presumably, I'm assuming this is the uh, Buzz Lightyear's equivalent, equivalent of R2-D2 from Star Wars, but I could be very wrong on that. I'm just going based off what I've seen in the trailers, and I believe this guy has not appeared in the trailers, so there's also that, I guess. Anyway, the overall design of the figure is fairly simple, with not a lot of unusual techniques used. There is some minor studs down on top used for his tread patterns and the front of his torso. The figure's head does use a very interesting design, with it using a bracket piece to hold the main headpiece in place. His eye is the typical unicorn sword in red, or unicorn horn in red, which is a very neat, uh, neat detail. There's a sticker on the side of his head, as well as two on the front of his torso. I do like this pattern as it does have really, a fairly strong resemblance to that of Wally from the Wally uh, from Disney Pictures Disney Pictures Wally movie. I'm not really sure what the point of this thing is if this is his arm or what it is, but it does have some uh, art, some articulation on it for this being able to be turned around all the way. And yeah, again, I don't know the significance of this character in the movie, so I can't comment on anything in, in relation in relation to the movie. But that's it for the robot figure. Next, we'll look at the minifigures. Two minifigures are included in the set, Buzz Lightyear and Izzy Hawthorne, both based on their appearances in the Lightyear movie. Of course, both figures featured the same torso and leg printing, with some very nice designs on both the front and the back. Both figures also feature alternative headgear for each. The Buzz Lightyear head is, I believe, brand new for the uh, for this wave, and is a, has some very nice, ex very nice expressions for it which could be good for a pierced version of Bruce Wayne from the Batman films. The Izzy Hawthorne head, I believe, is the same one used in the Captain Marvel wave, though I could be wrong on that. The final builds of the set, or final detailing for the set, is the Sox figure, which is a, re a reprinted orange version of the cat figure introduced years ago. There is also a laser piece included for Buzz Lightyear, as well as the battery for Zerg. And yeah. That's it for the minifigures. Next, we'll look at the box. The box art for this set is the typical uh, box design for this price range, or box size for this price range. It does change up the design a little bit, though, for this set, or for this theme. The set information is now in the bottom right-hand corner. In the bottom left-hand corner, we have a nice image of Buzz Lightyear from the movie. Up top, we can see the Disney Pixar Lightyear emblem. And on the front of the set, we can on the front of the box, we can see the uh, set in action with Buzz Lightyear, Izzy, Eric, and Sox fighting the Zerg robot. On the side of the box, we do have a nice character information thing showing the character names. Buzz Lightyear, Izzy Hawthorne, Sox, and Eric. On the top of the box, we do have an actual size icon showing Buzz Lightyear. And then on the back of the box is some more images of the set, including Izzy's gun, as well as some, Im some images of the characters with their alternative headgear. A very nice... Nicely done version of Buzz Lightyear is uh, in the bottom left-hand corner. And I do like this box uh, box styling, which adds a really unique touch to the overall design. But yeah, that's it for the box art for the set. Next, we'll talk about, talk about my final thoughts. Overall, I'd say this is a okay set, in my opinion. I do think it is a little bit overpriced, though, especially when compared with the Marvel superhero mech armors from earlier this year. In Canada, this set retails for $40 Canadian, whereas one of those mech armors is $15. In the, compared to one of the mech armors, this set contains one additional minifigure, with a brick-built figure also included. In my opinion, I don't think a brick-built figure and a minifigure are enough to justify the $25 price difference, though. Perhaps an alternative terrain build uh, could have been included to add some extra value. Even a third figure would have been nice, 
but that is not the case, unfortunately. Anyways, that's it for my review of the LEGO Lightyear Zerg Battle, set number 76831. Let me know your thoughts on the set in the comments below, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.